All right, you guys, so check out a really cool website, which is a 3D mockup animator. And I can say this is something unique that you don't find that often. So today we're gonna check out how to use it and also import it into Blender. So this website is called Virtual Threads IO, and here you can create some really cool 3D animated mockups. And as you can see here, we got a couple of mockups with apparel specifically. So if you pay for a subscription, you can choose whatever you want from here. This time I'm gonna go with this hoodie, click on it, all right, let's wait for it to load and take a look at that. Here we got the hoodie. On the left, you got the settings. I'm gonna go with upload your design, click on it. And here we got the sides where basically you can upload the designs. Here we can upload the design and I'm gonna select the logo. You also can select an SVJ. So I'm gonna test out with the SVJ. There you go, works. And click on it and here you can scale it down and I'm gonna position it on the front. Now this is kind of bad, I don't like it because if you go up, it is going to cut it off. So I'm gonna test out with another product. I'm gonna check this out, this free version. So let's do this again. And I'm gonna place it right here. Look how much space we got. So I think this should be good. And click somewhere here to deselect because it's going to show up the bounding box in there. And you can just drag it and see how it's gonna look. Now you also can upload some other designs. I'm gonna upload design. And for example, I'm gonna select the second logo, click on open, scale it. And now I'm gonna place it down here. And as you can see, it is going to place it right on the sleeve. I'm also gonna scale this, there you go. And how I see you can also draw, which is interesting. For example, how? Oh, you just need to draw here, so. There you go. This is this looks really bad. I mean, it's kind of clunky. You also can add text. So here we got a couple of options here. Garment color. You can switch up the color of this. I'm gonna leave it white. And then you got the background. What is this? Oh, nice. Okay, well, not too useful. Now let's go to the animation. This is the most exciting part. So check this out. You can do a couple of things. You got the static, of course, and then you got the walk. And take a look at that, how cool that looks. And you can rotate it and it's doing its thing live, which is awesome. Then you also got the wave. It is going to stop and it's going to create this wind. And then you got the knit. Now this is a really cool effect. I really like this. So I'm gonna go back to walk and check this out. You also can increase or decrease the animation speed. Right now it says it's on maximum. Now it's going slower, but now it's really fast at 0 0.5 how it was before. So I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle. Now I'm gonna go to static and there's also another interesting stuff somewhere, advanced controls, there you go. Check this out, it has acid wash. I'm gonna increase it and it's going to add texture on the logo, which is really nice. And then you also got the puff print. I'm gonna increase it and it's gonna emboss it a little bit. Actually, it's gonna deboss it, sorry. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm gonna go back, camera animation. I didn't even saw this, so I'm gonna go with this. So it's now rotating or this one, really nice. And then you're gonna go walk and it's rotating and it's walking, really cool. And then you also can go to the export. Um, you got the fast versus high powerful device. You can select here the size and you can export a video. Now I tried this out. I don't know how it works, but I don't like it. And then here we got the export 3D model. So I'm gonna download it. So let's open up Blender and I'm gonna drag and drop it. I'm gonna go with the default settings. So first what I'm gonna do is bring this up and I'm gonna switch this to shader editor. And here you can see the nodes. And next I'm gonna set up the render, switch the EV to cycles, CPU to GPU, and decrease the max sampling to 50-ish. And I'm gonna go to the object, switch it to world. Now let's go here to the background, select the background, press Control T. If you don't have the Node Wrangler activated, the shortcut won't work. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description how you can activate the shortcut. Here I'm gonna upload an HDRI. For example, I'm gonna go with this. And now I can go to the render, switch it, and it's gonna render it like this. So let's go to the world, switch it to object. And as you can see here, it's switched up the colors. Now we got black background with some gray logo. So I'm gonna go here to the color factor and change up the multiply to color dodge. So it's gonna make it lighter. And then I'm gonna go to the color here and bring it all the way up. So it's gonna be 100%. You also can invert it. I'm gonna press shift plus A, search for invert 
and place it here. So now it's gonna invert everything. But with the black t-shirt, it's actually better. So it looks pretty nice. And let's check out the other logo. And as you can see, we don't have it here, unfortunately. So, or if you place it on the back, it won't show up when you import in Blender. I don't know why is that. What I can do is also, I'm gonna select this, press Control T to add these nodes. And then I was thinking like, maybe if I can change up the location. So this could change the location, but it won't show the other logo or you can rotate it, the logo somewhere else, or you can place it in the back. I don't know where's the other logo, unfortunately. Now when you import this render into Blender, it won't animate, unfortunately. So we got here the timeline. If I hit play, as you can see, nothing happens. So, so yeah, pretty much this is it. And thanks for watching.